G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you a fairly challenging second moment of area example. So before I even get started on the description of the problem, I just want to warn you in advance that the calculus can get a little bit hairy. Okay, so here's the problem. We're asked to find the second moment of area about the x-axis for this shape just here. And this right here is an arc of a circle of radius r, and this right here is an angle theta, and this right here is also an angle theta. Right, so this is the shape we're dealing with, and we're asked to find I subscript x. So first of all, we need to recall that the, that the um, formula we use for I subscript x is the integral of y squared dA. Right? And, and this is just the uh, formula we need to use, but choosing dA is really, really important. So I'm going to choose a value of dA, which I think looks the simplest, but rest assured there are dozens of values of dA you could choose, which will all give you the same answer. Because this is part of an arc just here that makes up part of a circle, I'm going to use cylindrical coordinates. And I'm going to use, and I'm going to use a small chunk of area, dA, right, which will be given as dA, which is dA is equal to r dr d gamma. Okay, now you might be wondering what these terms are, in case you're not too familiar with cylindrical coordinates, so let me help you out here. R is going to be the distance from your origin towards your, um, the direct distance from your origin towards this element of area. So this is going to be lowercase r, and this is your variable. And gamma is going to be the angle which is made from the horizontal to this line just here. Okay? So that's what I'm choosing for DA. Rest assured that there are dozens of other DAs I could have chosen. I could have chosen a rectangular coordinate, DX, DY, if I wanted to, but I, I have a suspicion that the calculus would be a little bit harder that way. Okay? So we can start substituting into here now, but we'll notice we'll need to substitute Y out as well. Fortunately for us, we know that Y is also going to be the distance to this little block of area. So this right here is going to be y. And we can tell from direct substitution that y is going to be, sorry, from direct trigonometry, that y is going to be r sine gamma. r sine gamma. OK? So we can substitute these guys back into this formula and, and figure out the double integral. So this is going to be equal to the double integral, the double integral of, let's see, substitute y. And it's going to be r squared sine squared gamma, right? And then we've got this little guy here, which is going to be r dr d gamma, right? And notice the order of the differentials here. r is first, so this will be our limits for r. And notice we're going to be swooping out this element from here all the way to the outskirts of the arc. So we're going to be integrating from 0 to capital R. We're going to be integrating from 0 to capital R. And once we've got this little strip just here, then we're going to be integrating a, um, with respect to gamma. So we're going to be integrating from gamma is going to be equal to minus theta to positive theta. Minus theta to positive theta. OK, if you can understand this step, that is fantastic, because the rest is purely mathematics. All I've done here is I've evaluated what the bounds should be, and what y is, and what dA is. Th this, in my opinion, is the hardest part. The rest is purely mathematics, OK? So what we're going to do now is we're going to realize that we're integrating with r first, treating gamma as constant using the double integral method. So this will turn into, I'll, I'll, I'll rush through it a little bit. We group these, it's going to be r cubed. Integrated, it's going to be r to the 4 on 4. So it's going to be. Um, r to the 4 on 4 with limits from 0 to capital R times by sine squared gamma um, d gamma, right? And now we've evaluated that first integral, and the second integral was from minus theta to theta just there, OK? Let me finish that guy off right there. Now, this is quite easy to analyze. That's just going to be r to the 4 on 4. I'll suck that out of here because it's a constant. It's going to be r to the 4 on 4 times the integral um, of sine squared gamma d gamma from minus theta to theta, right? And, and you might have just memorized um, how to evaluate the integral of sine squared theta. But if you haven't, that's OK. I'm sure you could probably do this through a clever application of integration by parts. But I always like to try and solve these things through simple um, sine and cosine substitutions. So. Uh, to do this, we're going to have to recall that cosine of 2 gamma 
is going to be equal to um, cosine squared gamma minus sine squared gamma. This is something I recommend you just memorize from like year 10 math. And now we can substitute out the cosine squared gamma by using another formula, which is one equals sine squared plus cosine squared. So we can rearrange this to write this as one minus sine squared gamma minus sine squared gamma, right? And then we just group the sine squareds, solve for sine squared, and then we're left with sine squared gamma must in fact be equal to, bring that over there, bring this guy over there. It's gonna be a half minus a half cosine two gamma. Okay, so the whole point of doing this is so that we can find um, an integral which is easier to evaluate than sine squared, which is this guy just here. So let's substitute this guy in replace of him just here. This is gonna be r to the four on four times the integral of a half, quite easy to integrate, minus a half cosine two gamma d gamma, right? Both of these things are much easier to integrate. So let's just do it in one go. It's r to the four on four times by gamma on two minus um, a quarter, right? You divide this guy. So it's gonna be a quarter um, sine two gamma, right? From limits from minus theta to theta. All right, let me resize this a little bit. There we go, I've just moved this guy over here a little bit. So now we need to evaluate these limits just here, and it's not that hard, so I'm just gonna zoom through it. It's gonna be equal to r to the four on four um, times by, let's see, let's do him first. It's gonna be theta on two minus a quarter sine two theta, right? And then we subtract, we subtract um, minus theta on two minus a quarter sine minus two theta, okay? Um, let's close that bracket off. Okay, now this turns into a little bit of a hairy algebra, algebra problem. This is gonna be r to the four on four times by, these two will group together to give theta, right? This is gonna be minus a quarter sine two theta, can't do much with that. This is gonna be minus, 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 because sine of minus x equals um, minus sine x. So this is just gonna be minus a quarter sine x which um, groups with that. So it's gonna be minus a half sine two theta. Okay, there we go. And that is our answer. That is our answer. Ix is gonna be equal to r to the fourth power on four times by everything in this bracket just here. I hope that made sense, guys. That was a little bit of a challenging problem because it's a pretty messy application of double integrals, plus there was a little bit of sign substitution in there, which made it a little bit challenging. But hopefully you understood the whole thing. Cheers.